It's time for Clarence Thomas to come clean. Justice Clarence Thomas has inflicted incalculable damage on the Supreme Court, damage that requires action by Congress and the Chief Justice to strengthen ethics rules. But Thomas himself could take an immediate step to repair the injury to what is left of the court's reputation for independence and integrity by providing an accounting of the all-expenses-paid trips he should have reported, but didn't, on decades of financial disclosure forms. Yes, I know, little in though mass history suggests he is inclined to go scouring his travel records. If he doesn't, his colleagues, namely, Chief Justice John G. Roberts Jr., should insist on it, and so should the Judicial Conference of the United States, the body charged with reviewing the justices' financial disclosure forms. Because it is clear that though mass financial reports fell short of what the law requires, particularly on the issue of free travel on the private jet of Harlan Crow, the Dallas businessman and Republican megadonor whose generosity to Thomas and his wife, Ginny, was the subject of a jaw-dropping report by ProPublica. On this subject, Domas's statement on Friday was unconvincing, blaming others for his missteps, early in my tenure at the court, I sought guidance from my colleagues and others in the judiciary, and was advised that this sort of personal hospitality from close personal friends, who did not have business before the court, was not reportable. Maybe he should have looked at the text. The ethics rules do carve out an exemption for personal hospitality. They don't let justices use their rich friends' planes as a personal taxi service, as Thomas appears to have done. The ethics law that governs disclosure required of federal judges and other senior government officials makes an exception for hospitality extended for a non-business purpose by an individual, not a corporation or organization, at the personal residence of that individual or his family or on property or facilities owned by that individual or his family. You'd have to stretch pretty far to consider a globe-spanning plane ride, hospitality in the ordinary sense of that word, or to call Crow's Bombardier Global 5000 Jetta, facility. But if you did, you'd have to deal with this provision, specifying that any food, lodging or entertainment received as personal hospitality of an individual need not be reported. The Judicial Conference, the federal judiciary's policy-setting body, made the requirement to report transportation explicit last month, in amended guidance specifying that hospitality did not include gifts other than food, lodging or entertainment, such as transportation that substitutes for commercial transportation. The Judicial Conference, the federal judiciary's policy-setting body, made the requirement to report transportation explicit last month, in amended guidance specifying that hospitality did not include gifts other than food, lodging or entertainment, such as transportation that substitutes for commercial transportation. And consider the interpretation of the court's preeminent textualist, Justice Antonin Scalia. In 2004, Scalia rejected arguments that he should recuse himself from a case involving Vice President Dick Cheney after they flew together on Air Force Two to a hunting trip in Louisiana. Scalia wrote that other transportation did have to be reported, but not government flights. That this is not the sort of gift thought likely to affect a judge's impartiality is suggested by the fact that the Ethics in Government Act of 1978 which requires annual reporting of transportation provided or reimbursed, excludes from this requirement transportation provided by the United States, Scalia wrote. Emphasis added. Indeed, Thomas himself apparently used to think Crow paid travel was, in fact, reportable. In 1997, Crow flew Thomas on his plane to the exclusive Bohemian Grove Club in California. But after the Los Angeles Times reported on the Thomas Crow relationship in 2004, Thomas stopped reporting such gifts. What changed, other than the unwelcome publicity? This isn't the first time Thomas has been heedless of reporting requirements. In 2011, he amended years of financial disclosure forms because he had failed to list his wife's employment with the Heritage Foundation and Hillsdale College due to a misunderstanding of the filing instructions. Seriously? The instructions aren't difficult, you don't have to report the amount of your spouse's income, but you do have to say who's writing the check. The point, one seemingly lost on Thomas, is transparency and the underlying goal of generating trust in the judiciary. Assuming that there is some ambiguity in the former version of the regulations, 
what is the more prudent course for a judicial officer who is interested in promoting public confidence in the judiciary? Ask Jeremy Fogel, a former federal judge who served for seven years on the U.S. Judicial Conference Committee on Financial Disclosure. In that context I would err on the side of reporting more rather than less, added Fogel, now executive director of the Berkeley Judicial Institute. Focusing on that point gets to the heart of how though mass conduct is similar to that of his colleagues, and how it is different. All justices accept trips with travel and lodging reimbursed, and that is not a bad thing. Teaching law students, attending bar conferences, giving lectures, all of these are important activities that help educate the public about the two opaque proceedings of the High Court. And all justices, let us hope, have friends. Often, unsurprisingly, these are friends who share their political and ideological outlook, birds of a feather get to flock together. Often, again unsurprisingly, these are friends in high places. As the years unfold, and careers prosper, the kind of people who make it to the Supreme Court have friends who reach other pinnacles of government or the private sector. Donning a judicial robe does not require discarding these long-standing relationships, justices aren't monks. But it does counsel taking care about appearances. Moreover, justices aren't condemned to their pre-existing social circles, but they need to take care that they're not being lavished with favors and are not being used because of their exalted positions. The Crow Thomas friendship, Harlan and Kathy Crow are among our dearest friends, Thomas said in his statement, didn't begin until after he joined the court. Beware new friends bearing yachts. The wisdom of this advice was underscored last year, after reports about an Ohio couple recruited to befriend Justice Samuel A. Alito Jr. and his wife, Martha Ann, as part of a Christian conservative organization's Operation Higher Court. Defending the Alitos, the court's legal counsel, Ethan V. Torrey, wrote Democratic lawmakers, relevant rules balance preventing gifts that might undermine public confidence in the judiciary and allowing judges to maintain normal personal friendships. Let's be serious. Maintaining normal personal friendships doesn't require spending nine days touring the Indonesian islands on a private yacht with a man who has spent millions promoting conservative causes. This torrent of largesse wouldn't sit well if it were flowing from a democratic activist to a liberal justice. It would be accurately understood for what it does, undermine public confidence in the judiciary. It's time for Clarence Thomas to come clean. Justice Clarence Thomas has inflicted incalculable damage on the Supreme Court, damage that requires action by Congress and the Chief Justice to strengthen ethics rules. But Thomas himself could take an immediate step to repair the injury to what is left of the court's reputation for independence and integrity by providing an accounting of the all-expenses-paid trips he should have reported, but didn't, on decades of financial